Put on your 3D glasses now! 3D glasses not included. Mmm, this is some delicious coffee. Would you like some? In 3D! Whoa! Okay, so over the last few years, Hollywood has managed to dig up this old gimmick from the 1950s and 60s and try to reshape it into something to draw more people into theaters. And my god, it's working. And of course, the moment Hollywood makes something popular, everybody starts wanting to do it at home too. You can't blame us! So today I'm here to show you at home how to accomplish this effect using your Sony Vegas program. To start, you're going to need two video cameras. Any two video cameras will do as long as they happen to shoot in the same size, shape, and resolution. The two I'm using aren't even the same brand, but they both shoot in 1080, so that's all that matters. Now what you're going to want to do is try and find a way to place these two cameras side by side at equal levels about three inches apart from each other, about the same distance as a pair of human eyes. I found this little metal rig for about $2 at one of the local hardware stores, and I just put a couple of bolts and nuts on there to keep them firmly held into place. You don't really have to do this, but it makes it a lot easier to put it on a tripod, as shown here, and it keeps them from getting bumped and knocked around. You want these to stay as steady as humanly possible. Once you've got it all set up, hit record on both of the cameras and you're good to go. Oh, and if you have a flip screen available, turn that sucker around. You want to be able to see what the heck you're doing. Now the best way to make sure you've got both videos synced up properly is to make some kind of a loud noise that you can then line up on the editing suite. Just clap your hands, sync, sync, and you'll see the two little things side by side. It works pretty well. Now you're going to want to have your main focal point about five feet away from the camera, about as far as I'm standing right now. Make sure that your background is as rich and layered as you can get it. I mean, right now I'm standing with a wall behind me here and a long hallway down the side here. That's not an accident. I'm doing that on purpose because that gives you more of a feeling of depth. Remember, 3D is just as much about what's behind you as what's in front of you. Now when you really want to play up the whole something coming out at the audience thing, you can't go wrong with a slightly smaller object. It's easier for the, the eyes and the mind to focus on. And when you bring it out, make sure you don't just make it pop right up where it would be. That, ugh, it hurts people's eyes, it doesn't work that way. You want, to, you want to bring it so that it's in view the whole time. See, it allows the muscles in a person's eyes to kind of have time to focus and unfocus when it does that. Um, I find that uh, Gun barrels, tubular objects, they work beautifully for this kind of thing. Now again, this is where having a flip screen really helps so that you can observe exactly where objects are in the screen at any given time. It also helps when you know how to play something like this. <laughs> My lungs just ain't as big as they used to be. Now a lot of people like to go with the idea of tossing something at the camera to get that kind of a shock effect. Uh, that works usually if you've got good aim. I don't. Now the scheme I'm using for the tutorial right now is the traditional red and blue lenses. Uh, I kived these a long time back for the big uh, Michael Jackson This Is It special. Wow, it's like having a singing pedophile right here in my own living room. <laughs> they were giving these away in all the local gas stations. I currently only have the one. There's a bunch of websites out there right now that show you how to buy or make your own, so I won't go into that. You may now remove your 3D glasses. Okay, let's get started. Now, I'm doing this on Sony Vegas 9 Pro, but I'm pretty sure it works on nearly any version of Sony Vegas. Now, the first thing you want to do, whether you're using tapes or you're saving this directly to digital, make sure you clearly label which was the left side camera and which was the right side camera footage. Reason for this is if they get mixed up, it just ruins the effect and uh, kind of hurts your eyes too, eh? Now, when it's time to start dragging and dropping them, go ahead and put the left eye footage above the right eye footage. That's very important. Once you've got them both down there, go ahead and sync them up using the audio tracks, right where you either clapped or yelled or whatever it was that you did. Get them so that they're lined up nice and even. Once you've done that, make sure you delete one of the two audio tracks. If you don't, it's just loud and annoying. Now you just want to hold down the shift key while clicking all of the tracks and then right click and select group and create new. That way if you accidentally slide them around a little bit they won't fall out of sync. Now we're ready to start meshing these things together. Go ahead on up to the top track, the left eye, and reduce its transparency to about 50%. Once you've done that, slide all the way over to the left and click the compositing mode key, that's that little green one with the two boxes, and scroll up and select screen. Now it's very important that you do this after you've reduced the transparency. If you don't, it buckles up. I haven't bothered looking into why it does that, but yes, that's the order you want to do it in. Now we're going to start messing with the colors so they sync up with the 3D glasses. 
Now, continuing with the top track that we've been working on so far, go ahead and hit the Video Event FX button on there. And uh, there are a whole bunch of different means of messing with the color, but the one that works best for this effect is the one called Sony Levels. Now, on this top track, you're going to want to go ahead and choose Sony Levels twice so that it's labeled two times up there on your little box and hit OK. Then, uh, doesn't matter which one you're on at the time, just uh, go to where it says Channel and select blue and then down where it says output end you just want to you want to pull that dial all the way down to 0, 0.000 then go to the other levels that you brought in and click on the all channels button and select green and then just like you did with the blue select it all the way down to the end of output end 000, zero. so the top layer will be pretty transparent and be really red now go ahead and click out of that and then you're going to go down and do nearly the same thing to the track below it. Only this time you're only going to click Sony Levels once in the Video Event FX screen. And uh, this time you're just going to choose red and then take the dial on output end all the way down to zero. So this will only pretty much push the blue highlights. And this is going to really give you all the base of shadow and everything in the image. But this is completely adjustable for whichever kind of glasses you have. For instance, uh, these are the ones that came with my copy of Coraline. They have the, uh, the green and purple. See, in this case, it's just a matter of taking out all the green on one side and all the blue and red on the other side. Simple, simple. Now, I think that it's worth mentioning, too, that because we're just working with two base colors to make this work, uh, anything that you happen to be holding on camera that's like vivid, bright, multicolored will not work in 3D very well, as you can see with this lollipop test I failed on. Now, there's one step that a lot of the tutorials on the subject tend to skip, and I think it's very important. The whole premise of the 3D illusion is based on the human brain's ability to process images coming from each of the two eyeballs. Now, we don't realize it, but whenever we're looking at something, even if we're looking at a whole room full of stuff, our eyes really kind of focus on one particular object and then work their way around that. So, you want to make it easy for the eyes to focus on your central object in question. In this case, it happens to be me, the guy sitting in the middle of the screen gabbing and throwing objects around. So, what you want to do is go back to your top track and click the Pan and Crop button there. Then, you want to switch the little thing over here on the left-hand side that prevents you from being able to move it up and down or in all directions. Make it so that it will only go from side to side. It will say move in X only. And that will help prevent it from being moved up and down, which would just mess up the picture. Now, what you want to do is just slide that around while looking at the two images together until the red and the blue on the central object, again, me, happens to line up almost perfectly. Now when you put on the 3D glasses, this central object becomes pretty neutral and easy to look at, and it pretty much amplifies all the effects going on both in front of and behind it. Once you've finished with that, go ahead and uh, put on your 3D glasses, if you've got them. If not, make some quickly. And just take a look at the video through the preview screen. You should be able to detect any 3D glitches from there. If any of the objects make you go cross-eyed or just seem to split up and not work, chances are the object is too close to the cameras. You want to pull it back a few feet. Once you're pretty satisfied with how everything's looking, go ahead up to the top left-hand corner and select Render As. You will wow your friends and family! So there you have it! I hope you found this tutorial somewhat useful. It's actually the first one I've ever tried to make. Kind of hard to make tutorials about anything with Sony Vegas that Little Rich hasn't already covered. Oh, by the way, uh, I've got him linked down here at the bottom of the screen. If uh, you haven't seen him yet, this is the guy to go to to learn how to make any wacky effect on Sony Vegas. This dude has spent a lot of time figuring out everything you could possibly do with Sony Vegas. So cheers, I'll see you all around. And hey, don't be afraid to uh, post your experiments as a uh, video response to this one. I'd love to see what you come up with. Bye now. Oh, who put this freaking light out here? Good lord. Halogen. Oh, it burns!